Can you tell me when you first moved to the Devati area? Um, I well, we went there to live when I was about nine or ten, which would have been around about sixty one, sixty two. Um, my father had a job as a caretaker in one of the flats in one of the multi story flats in Matthew Street in the Devati area, and that's when we moved in. It was a very strange place to live in the beginning because I'd been used to living in the house with a garden and we lived on the first floor so we didn't have to get the lift up to the, up to the first floor so that was all right. The area around there was just um, the high street area with shops and there were a lot of old shops there that um, they're long gone now. There was one particular supermarket that was uh, it was called Cat's Cat's Supermarket, I think it was called, although it was just a little tiny shop. It was quite new to have supermarkets, really, in Swansea. And they sold all sorts of groceries and things, but they used to sell one thing in particular, which was really nice, which was a glass of lemonade that you could buy for sixpence. And uh, a lot of the children, including myself, used to go in there and buy glasses of lemonade, which was very nice. This was just by the Palace Theatre, but still there now. Um, sadly the palace is in terrible decay at the moment so I'm hoping that they are going to restore that somehow Were the flats brand new when you moved into the, to the Vati? Yes, they were all very much brand new and uh, very strange really because the bathrooms didn't have windows in them so that was a bit that was a bit strange um, they just had a sort of a, uh, an air vent that used to make a bit of a noise. Also, the central heating, which was something new to me, um, was just little vents in the wall that blew hot air, and that was uh, that used to dry the air a lot. But it was but it was nice and warm. We also had um, a veranda, as we called it, or a balcony, where you could you could just sit outside if you wanted to. But in the kitchen, there was a big cupboard that was called a drying room. Um, where you would dry your clothes after you'd wash them, but it didn't work really work very well. So most people used to ha actually hang their clothes on the balcony to dry, and they still do it now, I think, because there's still a lot of people living in the flats there now. There was a little park there for the children that lived there, which was really nice, because um, there were quite a lot of children living there at the time. Not really a place that was suitable for children because. The lifts would quite often break down, but um, it was difficult then for people who had prams and things. The design of the flats really wasn't uh, wasn't really very suitable for families with children. It much better if they'd kept it for just couples or elderly people, which, which is what they are now. Um, all along High Street there were a lot of old shops that are no longer there now as well. There was one in particular, which was a faggots and peas shop, which was really nice because we'd take a big jug down to the shop and you could buy the faggots and peas and the gravy would all be in with it. And then you'd take that back home and you'd have it with your mashed potatoes or whatever. That was a very popular shop. There were also a lot of chip shops there. And um, my mother actually worked in a shop on High Street, Upper High Street which was a draper shop, which is something we don't hear of now, which sold uh, fabrics and um, curtain materials, things like that. And she worked there for quite a number of years. There was also a bespoke tailor shop there, which is now no longer there. That was next to St. Matthew's Church, which is still there. Um, and there was, um, there was a little corner shop there and lots of little shops really that you just don't see anymore in Swansea. Um, sadly they've all gone now but uh, when I was uh, still in primary school we lived in, in Devati Flats and um, my mother was able to go out to work then because my father was always, always on the premises being the caretaker and she worked in the draper's shop which was just a bit further down the road and it was called James Brothers and I can remember going there to see my mother occasionally and she, they would have one of the the strangest systems where the the money was taken from the customer. It was put in a little sort of bullet thing and sent up through a tube upstairs. 
because they didn't have the tills on the counter, but all the change and everything then would be sorted out in an office upstairs and then sat back, sent back down to the the counter and then the assistant would give it back to the to the customer, which was that was very unusual. Um, I can remember as well um, the Cat's Mini Market where we used to buy the lemonade. That was a lovely little shop. And then next door to it, there was, there was a news agent which sold all the comics and things like that that I used to buy when I was a child. And I loved that little shop. Um, further up High Street towards Green Hill, there were a lot of purpose-built shops um, just for the people who lived really around that area. I can remember there was a hairdresser's there that is still there. Um, there was a chip shop there and there was a pub and I think it was called the Lower Lamb. I never found out where the Upper Lamb was, but uh, there was the Lower Lamb and there was also a few other little shops. I can't quite remember what they were now. Um, but further down then there was a bespoke tailor. There was a faggots and peas shop where we used to get faggots and peas in a jug, you'd take the jug down and they'd give you the, the faggots and the mushy peas with gravy on and that was a, that was a real treat, we used, used to enjoy that. Um, living in the flats was quite a novelty for me, having um, come from living in the house, but it was, it was nice and it was all brand new, everything was brand new there. Um, there were 12, there were 12 stories in two blocks of flats and 10 stories in the other two where, where I lived. And my father was the caretaker there and he would do all the cleaning and maintenance and um, it was it, it was it was a nice job really because he was on the premises all the time so as I say my mother could go out to work then when I was um, about 10 or 11 and it was just down the road where she worked so that was nice as well um, I went to school then from from there and I we stayed there living in in the flats until I was about uh, 16, 15, 16 when my father had another job then as a caretaker somewhere else. What year was this? 68. And, and what year did you move into the Devati flats? Um, well I would have been about 8 or 9, uh, no say 9 or 10 so it would have been about 61, 62. Uh, when I was about 10 or 11 maybe we were, we were there living in the flats and it was quite nice because you could it, it was quite easy then to just to walk into the city centre and uh, just to look, have a look around the shops and you didn't have to catch any buses anywhere, which was great. Um, there was one corner shop living uh, nearby us where I just remember there's people, people would sometimes, if they were a bit short of money, they would go in there and buy um, a refill for a soda siphon. Then they would come back, empty the soda siphon, empty the, the soda into the sink and then go back and have a refund on the bottle because they would have paid for it originally on um, credit but if they needed money they would just take the empty bottle back and get the money back and that, I found that very strange. Um, now and again there were some people living in the flats who maybe got behind with their rent and things and I do remember seeing actual evictions from time to time where people would literally be thrown out on the street which is very very sad and um, I can remember that being quite horrendous, really, um, because people in those days, they, I mean, it, it wasn't as easy in those days for people to have work and benefits. The benefit system wasn't quite as good as it is now, I'm sure. So people would sometimes get behind on their rent, uh, which was very sad to see. As a, as a youngster living in the middle of Swansea, um, in the Devati area, as I say, it was very easy just to walk into town, into the town centre with all the shops. And on a Saturday morning, I used to meet my friends from school and we'd all go to the Kingsway, which was a very new um, area, and there would be lots of little cafes and things there. And we used to go there and have a cup of coffee and um, we'd have a walk around the shops. And I, I do remember, the, I mean, the buildings are very new because they hadn't been built that long and they were still building a lot of Swansea even then um, I can remember as a as a 10 year old going to um, the market with my parents no maybe it was I was younger than that actually um, it was just not long after um, the war really had ended and they were still building Swansea market um, and there was a, there was a lot of building work going on then and you would see a lot of um, bond sites as well in, in in Swansea in those days but most of Swansea 
by then was being built up and it was all very modern and very um unusual style buildings i thought then um it was very nice there was a really big roundabout in the middle on the top end of the kingsway um, which was really pretty with lots of flowers and things on it that was overlooked by the dragon hotel which was a very swish building at the time and uh now of course they they've got rid of that but um the roundabout was really nice and there was also castle gardens which you could go and sit um and just watch the birds and and just relax in the summertime that was very nice swansea swansea um j just by the castle there by swansea castle um castle gardens was was really nice um the shops that we used to go to though they were quite things were geared a little bit more towards youngsters then and uh it was quite nice walk, walking on the shops and things and going to the market um which had been there for a long, long time, but this was the new market now, so that was nice. Um, High Street itself, there were an awful lot of shops there, and there was also a very big hotel there called the Mackworth Hotel, which was quite an exclusive hotel for Swansea. Um, and as you walk down High Street, there were um, quite quite a lot of well-known shops. Um, for instance, there was W. H. Smith's, there was Littlewoods, there was a huge Littlewoods store there. And then further down you had a big Woolworth store, which was a really nice shop. Um, but High Street was just teeming with people in those days because it was the main shopping uh, street. Because although the Kingsway had quite a lot of shops, High Street really was the main shopping centre because this was way before any of the quadrant had been built. Oxford Street had quite a few shops there as well. There was Marks and Spencer's and Rich Home Stores which were well-known shops. Um, and all around the market, there were quite a lot of shops, retail sent, retail units going all the way around the market. There was John Menzies, which was uh, which was a lovely shop. It sold records and things. Um, and there was Dulcis. That was a lovely shoe shop. And then around the corner, you had C&A, which is where we used to go a lot to buy clothes when I used to meet my friends there on a Saturday morning. Um... As I say, the Kingsway, there were quite a lot of cafes and things on there. That was nice. We used to go there on a Saturday morning. Um, but up in High Street, you had a lot of Italian cafes and chip shops. And on the Kingsway, there was one uh, really nice cafe restaurant in particular. It was called The Milkmaid, which was um, typical of cafes in those days because milk was being... Um, popularized really as a health drink and a lot of these sort of dairy style cafes were that popped up everywhere the milkmaid was really nice we used to go there quite a lot and you'd have a lot of egg dishes and omelets and scrambled egg and toast and different things like that and milkshakes especially milkshakes were everywhere when i was growing up um with, there was another cafe down in union street and uh, that was italian run again a lot of the cafes in swansea's were run by italians coffee bars as they'd call them now or milk bars some of them were what and, were their names um, there was uh well you had the cardoma especially which was uh it's which is still there today which the original cardoma was in a different place in swansea but the cardoma that's there now is exactly the same now as it was in those days and that was very popular um an espresso cafe as they called them espresso bars uh which sold very strong coffee but i think most people in swansea in those days would just have what they called a milky coffee or a frothy coffee which was always very popular um there was one called the union cafe as well in uh, union street that was very popular um but up up in high street you had quite a lot of uh, little cafes as well i can remember sidoli's and cascarini's um they were dotted all over swansea and they were always very popular In 1968, my father then had another job as a caretaker of the Central Clinic, 21 Orchard Street in Swansea. And I was 16, 15 going on 16, when we moved there. That was very different again because there was just the one flat on top of the building. And it was a much more spacious flat. Um, but it was a little bit strange because they hadn't put radiators in the flat for some reason they thought that the heat of the building would warm the flat 
and it was it was a very nice flat um overlooking orchard street um which was a, it was a very strange place they'd knocked on a lot of old houses to build this particular building because they needed some sort of medical center where people could um, come and have different treatments it was also um the main uh, building where people could come and pay their rent because the housing department actually owned the building and um, it was always full of people coming back and forth to the housing department this was this would have been council houses now and people would be would be there all day long different things um i actually worked there then later on um when i left school that was very interesting we were right next to the police station and behind us in i can't quite remember the name of the street but it was there was um a, church, a spiritualist church as it is now but it was just a church then and there was another building there um as well but the, the spiritualist church was actually called the ragged school um which would have been a, a school i think for poor children um i'm not quite sure what what year that would have been there but the, but it was a very well known building the ragged school and i don't know whether children actually stayed there but uh it it was a school of some sort for poor children, uh, or a place for them to stay maybe, and that that building is still there now. The clinic itself is quite a nice building, it was, it was a very modern style building, and as you walked up the ramp, which is which was purpose built obviously because there were people coming in there in wheelchairs and things, um, there was a beautiful terrazzo marble floor in the foyer. Um, and there was also a little garden area, which was very pretty. Um, and we, my, my, I can remember my father used to have to look after that garden as well. But there was um, very dark wood panelling as you walked in. I, I can remember that being there because that was quite unusual, quite modern for its day. And there was a lift then that took you up. There were three floors. And there was a massive big staircase going up the middle up the mid, middle of the building, um, which was which had really nice uh, banisters on it that it, that are still there today. Actually, that's very nice. That's lasted really well. But the building itself was um, it was centrally heated. But as I say, we didn't have them in the flat for some reason. They thought it was going to it was we, we could do without it. But uh, we did. They did give us radiators in the end. Um, the offices all had very um, big windows which let the light in very very well it wasn't at all porky or anything although the windows in the flat weren't quite so big and um, in the in our living room actually they had to make the window bigger because it hadn't uh, I don't think they'd really thought about it being a flat and uh, people needing light in the flat but they had to make that window a bit bigger but the office windows were huge and they were metal frames which is quite unusual as well and uh, we had strip lighting in there, which was quite hard on the eyes, but it was it was very good for work, obviously. Um, um, outside the building, that was very modern as well. There was a, a really nice concrete mural, which is still there now, and that was a very modern piece of sculpture, to be honest, for that time. It was it was very representative at the time. And people walk past it now and don't even notice it. But I've, I've always thought it was a really nice piece of uh, art. Inside the building then, there was a big atrium going right up through the building. That's still there. Um, which, which also gave a lot of light into the building. Um, I did actually go up onto the roof of the building a couple of times when my father was there as a caretaker. That was very nice to be able to see all over Swansea. And you could actually see all the way down to the Mumbles. Um, very well from the roof. Uh, the other thing I can remember is overlooking the police station at the side of the building and the architecture of the police station was so old compared, so old fashioned compared to the clinic but it was such lovely architecture. I used to draw that quite often. I used to draw the windows when I was doing art in school. Um, the other thing was that I can remember very well it was the fact that um, the lift was on um, at the end of a long corridor leading out of our flat and I actually got stuck in that lift when we first moved in the building because uh, it was a little bit temperamental at the time and that scared me a bit but it was okay 
when we lived in uh, Central Clinic, my mother then had gone to work um, in Lewis Lewis, which is a really lovely shop on High Street. And it was just the back of the shop is just opposite the clinic. That was, that was really convenient. Also in High Street, I can remember at the time, we used to do all our food shopping in a new supermarket that was really um, something different for Swansea. And it was called Fine Fair Supermarket. Um, and everyone would sort of go to Fine Fair through their shopping because it was the only supermarket then in Swansea. Um, later on, they did build a few more, but Fine Fair was there for a number of years. But living in Swansea as I was getting to be a teenager was great because um, when I did start going to dances and things, I never had to worry about getting home because we, it was all within walking distance, um, which was a really nice thing. Um, as a teenager, as I say, it was quite it was quite nice just to be able to walk into Swansea quite easily because um, we were right, I was right in the middle of Swansea and any, any shops that you needed to go to were just there on you know on your, on your doorstep so we used to go my friends and I would always go to CNA that was a very popular shop but then they actually brought the first boutique into Swansea which was Chelsea Girl which I was fortunate enough to have a Saturday job there and I absolutely loved that because everyone that you knew would come into that shop on a Saturday and buy something and you'd chat to your friends. And I can remember the the pay I had for that day was 19 and 6, which was just under a pound. And that was what you had for a Saturday. So it didn't, it didn't buy an awful lot, but it was great. But it, um, the other shops then I can remember, if you wanted to buy records, they did have... Um, a department in Bridge Home Stores at the time which sold records, that was very popular. Woolworth was always very popular. But there was John Menzies as well, which I mentioned, which was um, by the market. And that was a very nice shop for buying records. When I was uh, growing up in Swansea in those years, it was, it was so nice because everything was sort of on your doorstep. Uh, it wasn't just the shops, it was the um, the cinemas, there was uh, the Audion Cinema, which replaced the plaza on the bottom end of the Kingsway. And there was also a dance hall, a massive big dance hall called the Top Rank, which is where I spent a lot of my formative years and many happy hours. And of course, I just had to walk up the road then to get home. That was great. In the day then, you had... Um, the beach was very, very close and we would sometimes go down there in the lunch hour when I was working in the clinic. But there were the Mumbles was, wasn't very far away either, so you could just hop on a bus and go down to the Mumbles, which was always lovely. Um, I had a good friend who lived down in um, West Cross, so I often used to go down there. We used to go down the beach. But the nice thing about Swansea was that you had... A lot of things in a relatively small area that you could visit. You had all the nice shops, the cinemas, theatres. The Grand Theatre was somewhere where you always went to see the pantomime. And um, sometimes groups would come to the Grand Theatre. And you had that as well. And then you had the lovely, lovely coastline, Swansea Bay and the Mumbles. And then further around to the Gower that was always very easy to get to and I'm very very pleased that I grew up in Swansea because it's a lovely town. Looking back on my time uh, growing up in Swansea the thing that strikes me most is how, how it's all changed now. Um, a lot of the old buildings that I can remember when I first moved there they're still there but they're very dilapidated now and it's such a shame that they can't preserve a lot of them. Um, and even some of the post-war buildings are in a dilapidated state now. And it's a shame that they tend to be uh, going downhill a bit. They could do with a bit of sprucing up. Uh, one of the things I can remember um, mostly, really, is um, the new Quadrant Centre, which was, uh, that's about 33 years old now, which isn't um, that old now, but... With, it it was so new and so strange to see something that was in a different part of Swansea with all the shops there, compared to High Street, which had which was the hub of Swansea in its day, and now the whole um, dynamic has shifted, and High Street has become such a rundown area. They have spent an awful lot of money on it 
recently and it's still going on now so i'm hoping that that will bring a lot more life back to swansea and in that area by the by high street train station um but it's a, such a shame really that they have to knock a lot of the old buildings down because they had such character compared to some of the newer buildings and um I expect some of them were a bit more damaged anyway, so they had to be knocked down. But there was a few arcades there that were really, really nice. There was a lovely one in High Street, I remember, an arcade there. And uh, that's long gone now, as has the Mackworth Hotel, which was a, quite a prominent building in High Street. But... When I left school um, in 1969, I... I first went to work in the Guild Hall, which is down on the seafront, and I worked then for the Education Department, but I wasn't there too long because I came to work then up in Central Clinic, where I actually lived, which was really nice because I never had to worry about going out in the rain in the morning. I just used to sort of roll out of bed into the office, and as did my father, of course, because he was the caretaker, and my mother eventually did get a job in the building as well, so the three of us worked there. It was very nice because you could save on coats and shoes and things. You didn't get any uh, worn out shoes walking to work or anything. And uh, it was so convenient. Um, I loved working in the clinic and I still do. I still work in the clinic now. Um, I always have found it a home from home and it really is a home from home for me. My father died there in 1980 and then my mother had to move out, which was very sad. And uh, because she, she, she loved living there. She's back now in Morriston living. But um, because I work there, there's always a connection there. And uh, it's something that I've always um, felt that it, it well, it, it was a really a home from home for me. And it was quite unusual when people asked you where you lived and you told them Orchard Street. And then they'd say, oh, well, there's no houses in Orchard Street. So you'd have to explain then why you were living in Orchard Street and how you came to live there. That was quite funny. Swansea has now changed um, a lot in the years. They have now done away with the lovely roundabout that I mentioned earlier. That was actually made into an underground um, system for people to cross the road where it was open in the middle and it was, they used to sort of call it the bull ring at some points. Some people did, um, but that was very nice because that was really well built and um, it was very nice in the summer, but the problem was that uh, it got a bit run down then over the years and they decided to do away with this altogether and put a big one-way system in where you've just got quite an ugly looking junction there now where the lovely roundabout was and the um, underground crossing and I really do prefer it when it was either the roundabout or the underground um, system because it did have a bit of character then it just looks a bit dead there now um, a lot of the buildings they put up in Swansea are quite although I know they are very modern I think they're going to date quite quickly and uh, they're not really that practical I don't think for, for Swansea there's one building in particular that was um, a very well known shop in Swansea it was David Evans and they knocked the whole block of David Evans down, and it was such a lovely shop. I mean, it was it was like a big de it was a big department store, and you had um, it, it was quite an exclusive shop. And now they've knocked that down, and they've just got small retail units there, and they've got one massive big gym on the corner, which is a, such a strange thing to have right in the middle of Swansea. When you think of the lovely department store that was there before, I really don't like that at all. David Evans, as I've mentioned before, was such a lovely shop. As a child, I can remember going there and knowing that there was a rocking horse on one of the floors, I would frequently run off to find this rocking horse. And of course, I'd be lost in the shop then for an hour or so, and my mother would be frantic looking for me. But... Um, that was one. That was one of my earliest memories. Actually, of going to Swansea, was going to look for this rocking horse in David Evans. Um, you had proper shop assistants in those days, which you don't have now. It wasn't self-service at all in those days. 
you'd have the sh have the girls would have actually ask you what you were looking for and they'd go and find the clothes for you things like that you don't get anymore sadly but uh david evans was one of the nicest shops as was lewis lewis in high street which was a very similar shop again we don't really have department stores as such now apart from debenhams which is a chain of course um but i th i do prefer the old style shops they were much more um customer friendly i think living in those days in the 60s and 70s in uh, the middle of Swansea it was quite an adventure for me and my family we we were all very very fond of living there and couldn't imagine uh, living anywhere else for a long time when I got married and moved back into um, a house it was very strange for me then not being used to having a garden not being used to the sounds of the city and uh, it was I found that very strange when I got married and moved to a house but um, I'll always have very very fond memories of living in the middle of town it was quite unusual really to live in the middle of Swansea as I did there can't be that many people who did really especially in modern buildings there were a lot of houses in Swansea then where still are now but there weren't many people many families who lived in such modern surroundings and unusual dwellings and I'm very glad that uh, I had the experience of something a bit different when I was growing up.